Take a listen to Rachel Maddow. She's she and everyone at MSNBC. They're very mad that the Supreme Court agreed to hear the appeal of that case. It originated in the D.C. January 6th federal trial where Judge Chutkin, who can't stand Trump, ruled you don't have immunity for acts you took as president. No. Then it went up to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals and a George H.W. Bush appointee and two, I think, Obama appointees came to the conclusion that Judge Chutkin was right. He does not have immunity. He cannot get out of these charges by saying, I was president at the time. You can't charge me criminally for those acts. And a lot of people thought the Supreme Court would not take that an appeal from there that Trump asked them to take. Well, they did. And that effectively means the January 6th trial does not go before the election. It's just, at, at best, the Supreme Court will issue its ruling late June and it's going to be very, and the whole case, underlying case in the meantime, is held in abeyance. Nothing can happen in the case while SCOTUS has it. Nothing. It's basically the trial court judge loses her jurisdiction. So they're angry because they realize J6, which is their fave, their number one fave, Jesse, is not going to trial before November. And here's Rachel Maddow predicting, okay, watch this, what's going to happen next. Watch. The conclusion that we can arrive at now based on what they have done without having to wait for the ruling is that they are ensuring that Trump will not face trial. And when they inevitably rule that presidents aren't immune from prosecution after they leave office, what that will tell Donald Trump, if by then he is president, is that he can never leave the office of the presidency. Right. And if he is voted out in 2028, he cannot leave office and he is willing to com he is, he is welcome to commit any crimes he wants to as long as he is still president in order to ignore the result of that election and stay in power for life this is bs it's just flagrant flagrant bullpucky these people are crazy megan the communists are really, really, really good at creating idols. And I, I've, I've found this fascinating over the fa past few years. Well, I've, once I figured out what they do to watch them do it and not just idols you should worship, worship, but also idols you should throw tomatoes at. They'll create them ad hoc, right? They'll just do that. Uh, George Floyd actually is a great example. No one mm -hmm. in the country gives a crap about a black drug dealer who died of an overdose. Uh, let's just be honest. They didn't. Yet everyone immediately started to care and thought maybe they should care or at least felt like they should pretend to care because they took the situation and they knew that they could gain power with it. And so they immediately started putting up murals. He's having more funerals than the English queen. It, it, it was wild. By the way, there's no Boom, mural an or statue of Thomas Sowell anywhere. Yeah, of but course, George Floyd, of as you point out, drug dealer. No, yeah. Okay, go ahead. All over the place. They're in New York City. They're, they're, they're all over the place. So immediately they, they, they built an idol. They saw an opportunity. They built an idol and they told America, worship, worship, worship. They do it with Ukraine. Now, hey, don't you defend democracy. Don't you care about democracy? And they do the same thing with idols. They want you to throw tomatoes at. And Donald Trump is the best example of this of my lifetime. Donald Trump is a fairly moderate Republican. He is. Definitely yes. more of a pragmatic deal maker type. People forget how many deals he tried to strike with Democrats and Republicans when he first got elected. Even he, he was on board for an amnesty deal. People forget that. Oh, yeah, sure, let's get a deal done. He's fairly middle of the road. But they have, in their minds, convinced themselves that this is Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, everyone rolled up into one. He's this gigantic fascist demon. And they really, really believe it at this point in time, Megan. It's why they sound so insane with their rhetoric. It's why they've done everything they could possibly do to destroy him, and they justify it in their minds, right? How could you use your, your position as, as special counsel, as a DA? How could you use that to go after the president? It looks bad. Well, I try to explain to people on the right who don't get this, what would you do if you could take out Adolf Hitler? And they laugh and they mock the rock. Oh, he's, he's not Adolf Hitler. Yes, I know he's not Adolf Hitler, but in their minds, he is. It's what they do, Megan. These people believe that anything and everything is permissible to take out Donald Trump because he's some unique threat to the country. It's wild to be on the outside of that psychosis looking in, but that's what we're looking yeah. at. Well, it's it like, I think it was fairly clear last time around, Jesse. I lived it, you did too, 2020. Trump did not want to leave then. Trump was no. convinced he had not lost and was holding on with all, you know, all dear might. But what did he do? He left. He did not stay in office, 
even though they'd impeached him twice, they'd done all, right? Like all of the stuff. And now she wants us to believe that because he thinks he's going to be criminally tried upon leaving office, like we're in Russia. I mean, they are obsessed with Russia over at MSNBC. This actually is Vladimir Putin's reality. He probably would be killed or tried if he left office, so he's probably not going anywhere at any point soon. But we're in the United States of America, and Donald Trump, um, number one, if he gets into office as president, will just get rid of the two federal prosecutions. He will just pull the DOJ off and they will end. He doesn't have to worry about getting tried again, and he can also give himself a preemptive pardon. The Georgia case, I guess he might potentially still have to worry about, but that's in the process of imploding, Rachel. Maybe you didn't notice it because of the way your news coverage goes at MS. And the New York case is a nothing. So I'm not sure exactly what she's talking about, but again, I think she's talking about, the communist is talking about Russia, as you might put it, Jesse Kelly. Well, it's, it's, it is, Megan, it's wild to watch them. And you know what makes me angry about this is Rachel Maddow, who I don't know and don't care for, I at least can acknowledge is an intelligent, talented human being. I see talent when I see Rachel Maddow. You know, she's not Don Lemon. She has ability. She has talent to do it. <laughs> I agree with you. Rachel Maddow very likely knows that everything she says every single night is a bunch of crap. But her insane Democrat communist base doesn't. And so every night she creates a world of make-believe for them intentionally. And it's it, and honestly, Megan, it's it's cruel. It, it, like, like if I went home every night and let's say my kids were small, they're teenagers now, so this wouldn't work. But if I had little kids, four and five years old, and I told them if they uh, venture outside that monsters will eat them in the backyard. And I told them that over and over and over again. So eventually they live in this world of make-believe in their minds. Wouldn't that be cruel to do? I, I think that would be a really cruel thing to do. Well, that's what these dirt balls on TV do all the time and Democrat politicians do all the time. She knows that's a bunch of crap. She knows everything she's saying is a lie there. But the psychopath Democrat, the mentally ill single woman at home on 15 anti-anxiety medications sits there and looks at all her cats and says, oh my God, Trump's never going to leave. She believes it. <laughs> okay, I have to say, I don't agree with that. I think she so fears and has demonized Donald Trump. She genuinely believes he's capable of anything and her audience feels the same. And they really believe he's this monster-like figure who would get in there and just, you know, like the way your dog is when you try to get him into the car to go to the vet. Like, oh, pause, no, no, as they try to drag him out of the White House. <laughs> like, I think they believe he'd do it. I think it's sincere. It's sincere psychosis, but it's sincere. Yeah, look, you might be right about her. How could we psychologize her? You know, we don't know. But you, we're both right about her audience. The truth is, as hard as this is to believe that we share a country now with a lot of people who believe that. And that's, how do you... How do you do that, Megan? Back to the national divorce talk we've had a bunch of times on the show. How do you and I share a country with these people who live in a world entirely of make-believe? No, not grounded in reality at all. They believe the sky is green and it rains Sour Patch Kids. How are we mm -hmm. supposed to merge those two worlds? It's not as if they're slightly off. They live in a world that is not real. I don't know how to put that, I don't know how to do that. All right, to steal a phrase from... Jane Austen through the mouth of Elizabeth Bennet. Laugh at them. We laugh <laughs> at them. That's what we do. That's how we coexist. We have to mock them. Let me tell you a story about a guy named Leo Grillo. Leo was on a road trip and came across a Doberman. This dog was severely underweight and clearly in trouble. Leo rescued the dog and named him Delta. Sadly, Delta was just one of many animals that needed help, and this inspired Leo to start Delta Rescue the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They've rescued thousands of dogs, cats, and horses from the wilderness, and they provide their animals with shelter, love, safety, a home. Dedication and everlasting love to animals, that's Leo's mission and legacy. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions to stay open and keep doing this good work. And if you would like caring for these animals to be part of your legacy, speak with your estate planner because there are tax benefits too. You can grow your estate while letting your love for animals live well into the future. Check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more and speak with your advisor. We call dog a man's best friend for a reason. You can help those who need it most. Visit deltarescue.org today to learn more. deltarescue.org.
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.